Ethiopia has for decades been the beneficiary of a U.S. government trade agreement granting hundreds of millions of dollars for favorable access to U.S. markets, allowing Ethiopian airlines in recent years to build a global fleet and become one of the world's leading airlines. For both the U.S. and Ethiopia, this relationship matters. But for almost a year now, conflict has raged in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Numerous CNN investigations have uncovered evidence of Ethiopian government atrocities. CNN has now found evidence that Ethiopian Airlines cargo carriers have been shuttling weapons between Ethiopia and Eritrea in what experts believe may constitute a violation of international law and that trade agreement with the U.S. Here's Nema Elbaga. With direct flights from over 95 international destinations, fly Ethiopian Airlines, the new Spirit of Africa, a Star Alliance member. State-owned Ethiopian Airlines is Africa's premier carrier of passenger and freight traffic. But among the regular cargo, evidence of sinister shipments. CNN can reveal, based on documentary evidence and witnesses' accounts, Ethiopian Airlines has been transporting weapons between Ethiopia and Eritrea since the beginning of the war in Ethiopia that has seen thousands killed. According to aviation experts, this would constitute a violation of aviation law. Among the evidence are these stills that were taken on board Ethiopian Airlines flight ET-3313 and verified by CNN. It's the middle of the night. This cargo plane is being loaded by hand a slow and unorthodox method. But look closer. This isn't usual cargo. Inside these boxes are mortars. They are being loaded onto this civilian aircraft and transported from Eritrea to Ethiopia. Here is the cargo manifest, corroborating the day and time, November 8th, 2020. The date is significant. It's just four days into the conflict and months before Eritrea officially admits to being involved. Ethiopia has been at war with the Tigray regional government, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, for almost a year. Eritrea to the north has become the Ethiopian government's ally against the region of Tigray. An unusual alliance as the countries were previously at war with each other. Now they have a common enemy, Tigray, and they are sharing weaponry. CNN, CNN, we're CNN. Journalists. CNN has been reporting on atrocities in Ethiopia since the beginning of the year. If you want to have detained a CNN team, then that's what's happened now, because we're not going to the camp willingly. We travelled to Tigray last April and saw for ourselves Eritrean troops manning checkpoints with impunity, while the Ethiopian government denied their presence on the ground. That relationship between Ethiopia and Eritrea began months earlier, in November 2020, which coincided with an increase in the movement of weapons, shuttled back and forth from the Ethiopian capital to Eritrea. During the same month, there was also a series of massacres in the region of Tigray. An Ethiopian Airlines employee turned whistleblower spoke to CNN about how he had to deal with an unusual request. So my car is I'm thinking about uh, In various statements, Ethiopian Airlines has always adamantly denied ferrying arms on passenger or cargo planes. But in addition to speaking with whistleblowers, verifying cargo manifests and authenticating stills, CNN has obtained airway bill receipts that show at least six occasions in November where Ethiopian Airlines billed the Ethiopian Ministry of Defense to ship military items, including guns and ammunition, to Eritrea. In the end, the success of Ethiopian Airlines is an important and impressive symbol of the limitless potential of the U.S.-Ethiopian partnership. Ethiopian Airlines built its cargo dominance through a relationship with the U.S. government and American aviation giant Boeing. These new CNN findings, together with previous investigations into atrocities committed by Ethiopian forces, would constitute violations of international law, 
according to aviation experts, and run contrary to the terms of that relationship with the U.S. government. Whether this forces the U.S. to act substantively against the Ethiopian government remains to be seen. Ni'm al CNN, London. Responding to CNN's latest investigation, Ethiopian Airlines said it complies with all aviation regulations and, quote, to the best of its knowledge and its records, it has not transported any war armament in any of its routes by any of its aircraft. A U.S. trade spokesperson told CNN they would review eligibility for the U.S. African Growth and Opportunity Act next year, which will be based, quote, upon compliance with standards that include adherence to internationally recognized workers' rights, rule of law, and human rights. Well, after the review, the U.S. Trade Representative could possibly recommend that the U.S. President add or remove certain countries from AGOA beneficiary country status. Aircraft manufacturer Boeing said they had no comment for this story and the Ethiopian and Eritrean governments did not respond to requests for comment. Well, earlier, my colleague John Vore spoke with Mary Schiavo, CNN's transportation analyst, about these allegations, specifically about whether passengers were on the flights. We found out that both cargo and passenger planes were used in this operation. The CNN has no evidence that commercial passengers were on any of the flights carrying weapons. How significant is this question about whether or not they were paying passengers on board the same flights as the weapons? Well, if they were paying passengers on board, or any passengers on board for that matter, even if it was deadheading passengers, then that violates a number of laws, because at that point it would be a civilian flight, a civilian carrier, and a scheduled commercial passenger carrier. And they, of course, cannot carry um, munitions, war supplies, materiel in the, you know, presumably they were calling this that they were carrying war supplies and not just smuggling guns. But at that point, that is clearly a violation. Because the Ethiopian government, as the owner of Ethiopian Airlines, it can decide whether or not the flight is a civilian flight, even if it's the same plane, or if it's a commercial flight, right? That's right. And many countries have those kinds of laws, including the United States. In times of national emergency, the United States can declare that the civilian airlines become basically part of a fleet to serve the country, and the government can order them to become part of this national emergency. Now, every country has their own set of laws. Ethiopia's laws may be very different, and it's also different because they own the airline. The government owns the airline. But many countries have laws in place that allow them in times of emergency to use commercial planes, commercial airlines to perform military, quasi-military functions.